this class we are going to discuss the matrix chain multiplication problem using dynamic programming in our previous lecture we already discussed what is dynamic programming and what are the difference between dynamic programming and divide and conquer type approaches what are the advantages and what are the disadvantages of dynamic programming over divide and conquer type approach first of all in this session we will check what are the steps or basic characteristics of dynamic programming in dynamic programming first of all we need to find out a structure to solve the problem optimally that is we need to find out a structure of optimal solution we all know that dynamic programming is a type of algorithm where we are going to solve the problem which problem are optimization problem there are two type of problem one is called optimization problem and other is called decision problem here in using dynamic programming we are going to solve optimization problem so first of all we will very carefully analyze the problem itself and try to find out a structure to find out optimal solution then we need to define the structure in recursive way so we are going to solve the problem using the recursive manner and we know that in dynamic programming what happen it is quite similar to the divide and conquer type approach in both of the approaches the initial problem is divided into sub problems again that sub problem can be divided into sub sub problem and until that division will be continue until we find the unique problem and after having the unique problem we are going to solve the unique problem and that unique problem or the sub problem may be repeated same problem can be generated multiple time in case of dynamic programming we are going to solve the problem once and store the result in a table and whenever you encounter the same problem we provide the result from the table to that problem and in this way we solve and merge the sub problem then sub sub problem and ultimately find out the answer of the initial problem this is the way or approach of the dynamic programming first of all we need to find out a structure to find out the optimal solution and then we will going to give a recursive definition of that structure and then solve the problem using the bottom up fashion so these are the four characteristics of the dynamic programming okay next next come to the our today's problem called matrix chain multiplication problem what is this problem this is very interesting problem the problem is basically we have a chain of matrices let's say we have a n number of matrices a1 a2 up to an that is n number of matrices we need to multiply these n matrices so we need to find out the let's say the product value that is a which will come after multiplying these n matrices okay our problem is not to find out this product a but to find out the optimal way by which we can solve this problem such that total effort or amount of total effort that we will going to measure in terms of number of total scalar multiplication what is that scalar multiplication we are going to discuss just in the next slide okay so we are trying to minimize our effort to find out the product of n matrices okay and here in this matrix chain multiplication problem we will trying to find out the way or here we call the best way of parenthesization of the n matrices such that our total effort will be minimized so what is this need to give some attention to make it clear let us assume we have four matrices a1 a2 a3 and a4 for example and these four matrices we need to multiply we need to find out a1 into a2 into a3 into a4 that's it the value is a ultimately the resultant matrix is a 
Now this matrix multiplication can be done using these five different way. Why? Because we know that matrix multiplication have a property of association. That is matrix multiplication is associative. Which does it mean? It means A1, A2, A3. If we multiply in this fashion or we multiply in this fashion, both will give us the same, same resultant matrix. But at the same time, we need to remember that matrix multiplication is not commutative. This is not always equal to this. This is not always equal to this. So this is commutative property and matrix multiplication does not follow commutative property. Okay, it follows associative property, but it does not follow commutative property. Since it follows associative property, we can multiply four matrices in different way. These are the five different way how we can multiply these four matrices. And what is the re result of this? We need to verify what is the result of this. Whatever the output matrix, that will be same. If this matrix multiplication will give us the output matrix A, then this is also give us A, this is also A, this is also A, and this is also give us A. But the total amount of effort we need to put on to find out this matrix multiplication is different at each of the different way basically. What does we mean by you by saying the amount of effort? We need to clarify that thing also. If we consider A matrix having a order N by N, that is N into M, if the order of the matrix A is N by N, and order of the B matrix is M by P, then if we multiply these two matrix, that is scalar multiplication, then if the resultant value is C, what will be the order of the C matrix? If we multiply A with B, the order will be n into p okay and how many number of scalar multiplication we need to find out the answer c n by m means n number of rows m number of columns this a matrix has and this b matrix has b number of rows and p number of columns so to multiply these two matrices we need to have n into m into p number of scalar multiplication this is total number of scalar multiplication we need to we need to do to find out the answer c okay main thing which basically differs the amount of effort that is basically the number of scalar multiplication we need to find out the matrix multiplication result what is that let us consider there are three matrices A, B and C and these are the order of each matrices. Now these three matrices can be multiplied using two different way. This is way number one, this is way number two. So here what we are doing, we are multiplying A and B first, then we are multiplying C with the answer of AB. And if we multiply AB, then number of scalar multiplication we need that is 10 into 100 into 5. So that is 5000. And what will be the order of the matrix, resultant matrix of AB? Let's say if it is D, the order will be 10 into 5. Okay, so this is what it is given. So now if we multiply D with C, then the number of scalar multiplication we need for multiplying D and C is basically 10 into 5 into 50. This. And this is basically 2500. So total we need this plus this. That is 7500. Now if we follow this way of multiplication of three matrices. In this case we need, if we multiply BC, we need 25000 of scalar multiplication. 10 into 5 into 50. That's why it is 25000 number of scalar multiplication. And... If we multiply A with E, that is E is the resultant matrix of BC. The order of BC is basically 100 into 50. 
that will be 50,000. So the total number of scalar multiplication we need, that is the summation of these two value, that is 75,000. Can you imagine the difference, the huge number of difference between two different way? In this, if we follow this way, we need only 7,500 number of scalar multiplication. But accidentally, if we follow this way of matrix multiplication, we need 75,000 scalar multiplication. That is 10 times more than the previous one. This huge amount of difference has been made only for these three matrices. So if there are n number of matrices, then we obviously need to know which is the best way of multiplication. Otherwise, we need to put a lot of effort to find out the resultant matrix. So here, using the algorithm of matrix multiplication or matrix chain multiplication, our objective is to find out the best way of multiplying in matrices. That means we need to find out uh, optimal parenthesization. We need to parenthesize in matrices such that if we multiply these in matrices using this parenthesization, our effort will be minimized. So, in this class, we understand what is the objective and the property of the problem. And in the next class, we are going to solve this problem using dynamic programming approach. Thank you.